Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Well, she went. <laughs> I guess that's all there is to say, really. All right, end video. <laughs> no, so earlier today I saw Eugenia was in Jeffrey's live stream on TikTok and they were on there for a good several hours just kind of talking and uh, the the Heather's lunch table assembled at one point. The, the Volturi Council all came together and talked on a TikTok live panel together. Um, I mean, I guess that maybe Deb could play the role of Christian Slater in this Heather's scene that we're looking at right here and everything. So... I just wanted to take a look at some of the footage that went on during the live stream earlier today when Eugenia and Jeffrey went live. If you are new to all of this, this is the perfect video for you because I do want to take a quick little crash course review at everything that has gone on between Jeffree Star and Eugenia over the past month. These two have a very strange relationship and they are kind of fostering something that isn't really apparent to the audience. We don't really know if there is an ulterior motive for Jeffrey wanting to get closer to Eugenia. Is it strictly financial? Does he actually want to intervene and do something? We don't really know. There are speculations and there are theories, but I mean, we know how much Eugenia reveres Jeffrey. He could say anything and she would, no, no question about it. She would do it. No, no question about it. So for someone on social media that is so reluctant and so passive and so dismissive in a lot of ways to tens of that hundreds of thousands of people over the years let's be real is jeffrey potentially the key to saying something to eugenia that may motivate her to do something whereas so many other people have tried and failed and are continuing to say it and are just met with a lot of emotions typically in a eugenia video forum there's a lot of frustration. There is a lot of feelings toward the situation, and no one really knows how to quite go about it. So we are kind of observing in real time. Um, we have talked here on the, about this channel about there has never really been a situation on social media like this. So in a lot of ways, we are looking at what will probably be a precedent for the future of social medias and its looks and views on eds and something of the sort i don't i don't really know and you know i think it's worth noting social media has not been around very long so i think it's also important to keep in mind history repeats itself in a lot of regards so all the, to all of the people that are currently observing this and saying you know what, it's not our business, we don't really need to be involved in this. If you don't like it, don't watch it. That's something you hear a lot. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Um, There's a whole other side of this. There's a whole other conversation to be had, in my opinion, about what this sort of energy and what this sort of information and what this sort of display on social media and its impact is having on certain demographics. Um, I have not learned a lot about TikTok since it's came out, but over the past month, I have seen the amount of money and the amount of kids that are on TikTok getting their mom's credit card and coming on here and sending in little emojis. It, it's 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 an interesting little concept to be following. So I want to, before we hop into the footage though, I want to just take a look real quick at some of the footage and kind of a quick recap over some of the videos that I have made about Eugenia and Jeffrey specifically over the past month. So let's hop on in and kind of get a closer look or at least a refresher about the dynamic between these two people. So the video I have I pulled up now is of Jeffrey in his kitchen with the other friend, Paul. He's a TikTok person. Um, 
we're gonna yeah listen to how long they've been friends um I have seen videos on Twitch of Eugenia saying that she has always admired Jeffrey for a majority of her life, but she just started talking to him a couple years ago. According to Jeffrey, they have been friends a lot longer than just a few years ago. How long, Jeffrey? <laughs> yes, you guys. I think a lot. Of, I hear see a lot of people asking about my dear friend Eugenia. I've known Eugenia for fifteen years. Brittany, thank you for the makeup box. Um, Eugenia's doing fine. She sent me flowers to my store today. We spoke. Um, and she just recently got her PR box like a day ago. So I know people are trying to lie like, Eugenia pre-filmed that weeks ago. Girl, I just said it to her fucking two days ago. Um, so she's fine. Okay. So in this clip here, we heard that Jeffrey and Eugenia have been friends for 15 years. Jeffrey's 37 and Eugenia is 29. So in 2008, 14-year-old Eugenia Cooney was friends with 22-year-old Jeffrey Starr. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just looking at it objectively. That's that's quite literally what he just said. Um, I don't know about you all, but when I was 22, I did not have friends when I was that that were 14. <laughs> and I definitely didn't have friends that were 22 when I was 14. So it's interesting. Um, I think that. The, what we took away from this specific clip right here was specifically how Jeffrey's rise to fame throughout MySpace. Now, if you were around in the early 2000s, you know what I'm talking about. If you were on MySpace, it, you had a profile back then and you had your top eight and all that stuff. It is very unlikely that you did not at least hear of Jeffree Star back during those times. Um, I was probably on MySpace a lot younger than I should have been, but I remember Jeffree Star in the early 2000s having a very prominent profile on MySpace and a very big influence on certain demographics. Are we seeing a pattern here? Am I making something out of nothing? But I don't know if Jeffrey was necessarily on track in this specific video right here to be saying, I've known Eugenia for 15 years. Just because Eugenia may have had a MySpace profile in 2008 when she was in middle school, does that necessarily mean that you guys had a relationship? Because there are some videos of Eugenia talking and pretty pretty recently too of saying oh I would love to meet Jeffrey someday oh I really love his makeup I really like what he does um if you were friends with someone that doesn't necessarily strike me as something that you would say about someone that you've known for such a long time but I don't know this clip took a lot of people by surprise just because Jeffrey was basically admitting to being friends with a former 14 year old Eugenia. So don't really know what's up with that. But according to Jeffrey, they have been friends for a very, very long time. Moving right along, I now want to take a look at the video that sort of, in my opinion, put the nefarious spin on the dynamic between Jeffrey and Eugenia. This sort of opened a lot of people's eyes to, okay, well, it's one thing to be talking to someone on TikTok and doing these battles and having fun with them and doing chat rooms every night and making money off of it. But when we saw this specific clip, a lot of people kind of shuddered and thought to themselves, Oh, well, I don't know. Are, are we laughing with or are we laughing at? <laughs> Summon the Illuminati, bitch. I'm calling them. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What happened? You guys I've been seeing so bars. I've been, oh, okay. you know, you know, Mama's on that gas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what did they do? I'm stop thinking they did something to change. Nelly, you I know see Mama's you. on that gas. Is me. All right, you guys. Twenty seconds. It's anyone's game. Star family. Thank you for so much love today. I'm truly shook. Eleven seconds. Like, you guys. Like I'm actually shook about it. I can't believe it. Oh my yeah, gosh. All, lips, all right, four seconds. Here we go. Here we go. Well, if you're looking at the bar at the top of the screen, I think you can uh, 
kind of put two and two together about who wins. Um, so what we're looking at here, and if you don't know anything about TikTok, basically what went on was Eugenia and this person below Eugenia were on a team, and Jeffrey and the, the TikTok friend Paul, um, they were on a team. And if you lose, if, if you don't come up with the amount of points that is required to beat the other person, oh, wow, that was a real eloquent way of saying losing. <laughs> you have to leave the call. You, you can't stay on anymore. They, they go on to battle more people. So what they were orchestrating behind the scenes in this clip was that Jeffrey went on a different TikTok account, specifically the Jeffree Star Cosmetics TikTok profile. He has his personal account, and then he has his business account. He went on his business account and sent Paul a lot of points or uh, emojis or whatever it is required to win because had Paul lost this competition against Eugenia, Jeffrey would have been in a call with Eugenia and only Eugenia. And I don't know if at the time they were still kind of testing the waters of their relationship or if Jeffrey felt awkward around her. But basically what I took from this is he felt a lot more comfortable around Paul and did not want to be in a social situation where it was just he and Eugenia alone together doing whatever it is that they do and talk about. So this took a lot of people by surprise. It kind of put the dynamic into full display for a lot of people to see more clearly. Um, a lot of what I talk about on here and what we speculate on, it is kind of sneakily done and you do have to read between the lines and kind of pick up on things. However, I really cannot make an excuse for this. I mean, it was as clear as day kind of the whole laughing at her instead of laughing with her. We don't want you sitting at our lunch table. Very high school mean girls attitude. Now what we're about to watch specifically is when Jeffrey has his moment. And if you've seen this clip, you know what moment I'm talking about. But if you haven't, this is sort of the moment that was the turning point between, oh, these two are social media friends. These two like to talk to each other. These two like to have fun and play games with each other on this app. Sort of went from that ideology, mostly, and shifted into something differently entirely right here. <laughs> Bye, Eugenia. Oh. <laughs> 5150 bit. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh my god, you were amazing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yes. Okay, let me see what Nelly said. Yes, I'm still in. Yo, Jenny. <laughs> y'all. People are up. Selena. MVP Selena Gomez. What you, what you talking about, B Dot? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, there's something. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. <laughs> oh. Okay. okay. Oh. The reference to what Jeffrey was talking about before he quite literally started ROFLing was a few years ago, Eugenia and someone that she was close with at the time invited her to some type of social get together some outing and when they got there they blindsided eugenia with a crisis team and she was 51 50 and brought into intensive medical care to be evaluated and then later went on to receive treatment for a bit so the joke and i actually didn't even get it the first time around but the joke that jeffrey was making here is because he orchestrated making eugenia lose and therefore she had to leave she was being, you know, 5150 taken out. So that's why he said 5150B and then started to laugh and throw the phone and, you know, everything of the sort. So this really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And this is kind of where the narrative of, well, what are you guys doing with her? I mean, it's, it's you know, it's kind of strange to be having this sort of intimate relationship on TikTok like this, but then it shifted into something a little bit kind of dark. Because, I mean, you look at this objectively, and it's two people 
laughing, cra cracking up, cracking up at it. And I mean, if you look at the situation, it's really, in my opinion, not a laughing matter. So I don't know. If you're saying that you're her friends, friends typically support one another. They provide hard truths. They help people progress as humans. They help them in ways that they can't help themselves. Um, this right here just comes across as high school lunch table bullying. So when people saw this and this whole video and everything um, really rubbed people the wrong way. And a lot of people started to think, oh, the old Jeffrey's back. Oh, the, the nasty Jeffrey. Oh, look, he couldn't stay away from the drama. And hey, maybe they have a point. Maybe the people that are saying that have a point. But they definitely do have a strange relationship. However, after this video, after this aired I did notice that the participation and the involvement between Jeffrey and Eugenia ramped up significantly. They started talking a lot more. They started to be buddy-buddy. Eugenia would always say nice things about him. Like it, 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 Everything got amped up. Everything got turned up a notch after this. And Jeffrey quickly backtracked on this because I think that he realized that if you come on here— and you own a hundred million dollar business and you're laughing at someone with an ED, that's not a good look. That's really not a good look. So he quickly backtracked on here and said, well, you know, I wasn't really laughing at her. We have an inside joke. We've been friends for a very long time. Anyone who took offense to that just doesn't understand our friendship. And Eugenia was very receptive and quick to jump in with Jeffrey and agree to basically everything he said about that. Um, she was very, she's very protective over Jeffrey, very protective over Jeffrey. And when channels like me and when other people on different platforms talk about their dynamic and their relationship and suggest that maybe Jeffrey doesn't have her best intentions in mind, she immediately gets very defensive about it and basically reiterates everything that he will say in just a moment okay now y'all don't go into eugenia's chat and run your mouth and tell her some lies like y'all tried to yesterday i don't know what People. the fuck y'all talking about i'm live i didn't do anything y'all are delusional 51 50. I, right, I don't know what y'all are talking about blow me what? yeah me neither Y'all pick up somebody. <laughs> I'm live i don't know what y'all talking about my hands are right here y'all are delusional so that clip told me a few things. It told me that Jeffrey is interested in not losing his friendship with Eugenia. He does not want her to think that he was making fun of her just then, even though he was quite literally laughing and rolling around on the floor about it. But um, I don't know. The whole thing about I'm live right now, I didn't do anything, that was him basically saying I didn't not I didn't orchestrate the the winner of that TikTok battle. I did not make Eugenia just leave. I'm live right now. I didn't do anything of the sort. I, I mean, honestly, Jeffrey has a team. Je Jeffrey has multiple phones. He could have made that happen very easily. Just because he was live in that very second, that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I mean, if he wanted to orchestrate the winner of a TikTok battle in real time like that, uh, one text message. I mean, get get a different phone. I mean, he doesn't seem to care about his phones too much if he's throwing them across the room. So it's, it's interesting mainly because he told the audience, don't be going over to Eugenia's chat and running your mouth. Don't be saying a whole bunch of lies. Don't be spreading misinformation about what I said, that's not what I meant, immediately started to backtrack. So I don't know. Was it a slip of the tongue? Did he think that that would come across more differently? Did he think that everybody would laugh at that and it would be viewed more humorously when it was actually kind of viewed as, ooh, that's cringe? Hmm. But Eugenia quickly put on her cape and came to Jeffrey's rescue, assuring the internet that she was not mad at him and everything was taken out of context and that the audience 
yet again, was wrong. The audience doesn't know what they're talking about. The audience sees things in an incorrect manner, and everything they're saying is just an attempt to drive a wedge between Eugenia and Jeffrey, and that would not be happening under any circumstances. Guys, listen, I see some of you guys in chat. Listen, I don't care if Jeffrey gifted with the cosmetics account, okay? That's all good. I, uh, thank you so much for the corgi. It's like, guys, listen, if you're coming in here and you're trying to, like, get me to, like, turn against Jeffrey or you're trying to get me to, like, do whatever, for whatever reason, some of you guys want, like, that's not going to happen. Okay, like I said, I love Jeffrey so much. I literally think he's one of, like, the most amazing people. Um, Stargazer with the chef's kiss. Thank you so much. So it's just kind of like, yeah, no car ID with the crown. Thank you. It's like, you're not going to get me to do that no matter what, guys. Like, I'm not just going to be turning against somebody that I think is an amazing person. So this is sort of the all or nothing attitude that we typically see with Eugenia. If you are not supporting her, if you are not giving her praise, if you are not complimenting her, if you are not telling her what she wants to hear or anything that portrays her character in a positive light, you are immediately the enemy. You're the bad guy. Um, I'm the bad guy. She has basically come out and said, I mean, as soon as I started to cover Eugenia within a week when she addressed my channel, immediately the first thing she said was, guys, Jordy hates me. So... If you aren't immediately in the butt-kissing portion of the Venn diagram, you are considered a hater. So anyone that says anything bad about Jeffrey, that completely just gets washed over her. Uh, it, it, it doesn't phase her. It just becomes nothing. One ear out the other. So this is um, sort of a running theme with Eugenia here. She uh, kind of only hears what she wants to hear. She really isn't receptive to new information and opinions. She, in a lot of ways, has her mind made up on her own, or she has other people making up her mind for her. So it's kind of a difficult thing to navigate because you as a social media observer and a participant in the, the TikTok panels and everything, someone that wants to say your piece and get through to someone, you ultimately feel powerless because how do you convince someone or how do you get through to someone who is so adamant to one way of thinking? So if you see something harmful going on, such as Jeffrey making fun of her and you want to sort of you know open her eyes to it, but you can't, it's frustrating to see it continue to go on. So I think that that is why their relationship is so captivating among a lot of people because no one is really able to get anywhere with it. And I think that that is Eugenia's sort of appeal in a lot of ways. And, you know, we've talked about the mocking and the trolling and, you know, is this part of the condition or is this being done deliberately? When Eugenia comes on here and she dresses in a wedding dress and walks down her mother's staircase uh, with uh, the, the Nightmare Before Christmas skeleton attached to her hip saying, this is my boyfriend, you, you have to wonder. What role is this playing in social media? Are you doing this to get a rise out of the audience? Because a lot of things that people do on social media is to get a rise out of people. It's to troll them. It's to evoke some sort of emotion so that they keep coming back for more. So Eugenia is a fan, definitely, of social media interactions and attention in general. So you just have to wonder. I, I don't know. Are, are you closing your eyes to the situation because you revere Jeffrey to the extent that you do? Uh, is this all planned? Do you guys do, do you talk behind the scenes? It's strange. It's very strange to watch it play out. Now, just to wrap up the quick little crash course we are doing right here, this is something that occurred very recently and raised alarm significantly over the internet and sort of put the idea in a lot of people's minds, well, if there's something going on offside of the cameras that is sort of inducing or encouraging this sort of mean girl manipulative behavior, 
is it necessarily the best environment or best situation that Eugenia or Eugenia's mom is putting her in by her visiting Jeffrey. So right here, I'm not going to play this with copyright just because YouTube does not like it. But basically, Jeffrey was on a TikTok panel doing what he normally does. And as you're seeing, he's leaving the side panel right here to do something. Um, we don't really know what, but he steps away for a second. And then when he comes back, he ruffles his nose a little bit and says, oh, you guys, the allergies are killing me. And then he goes on to dance and lip sync to Miley Cyrus's flowers. Now, I am not saying anything one way or the other because that would, there, there's literally no proof. I, I mean, you just watched the same video that I did. He stepped out, you know, not stepped out. I mean, he, he moved himself away from the frame, came back and then immediately made the comment, oh, allergies a lot of people are speculating you know and i'm not going to insult your t intelligence i mean you probably know what i'm alluding to here exactly but it it has to make you wonder it has to make you wonder is this a situation that eugenia should not be placing herself in because if Eugenia is someone, and I feel a lot of people would agree with this, if Eugenia is someone that makes questionable decisions for her own self, then, you know, what if she is placed into the hands of people that will make decisions that are potentially even more detrimental? And that's definitely a scary thought. So... This video is kind of putting a little bit of trepidation on the radar in terms of, oh boy, Eugenia's going to go visit him. And then, I mean, so quite literally what we're about to take a look at is footage of them in this exact kitchen in this exact frame right here. So that is basically the, uh, the, the quick version of what has been going on the past few months between Jeffrey and Eugenia. Let's go ahead now and take a look at some footage of them together. How's Buzz? He's doing good. He's mostly doing pretty good. We had a break into the vet the other day. Cause like, yeah, he was like, Stop. I, think, I think like, I don't know like what happened, but his ear was kind of irritated. And then we thought we might've found the tick in him. And it was like a couple of things going on, but it seems like now he's good. Thank God. He's adjusting to Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, do you guys have ticks here? That's like not oh, too bad. Yeah, the ticks. Uh, oh. You guys have ticks here? I'm seeing a few ticks and triggers in the chat. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh my gosh, so guys in the chat. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep, we moved. Wow. I love it. Yeah, look. Now, I did not look at the comments when this was airing live. You all know my gripe with, gripe with uh, TikTok. Unless someone is recording this live, the footage is gone forever after they're done. So the footage that I get on this is sort of limited. I don't have access to all the different emojis and all the personalized chat rooms and everything that they have in their individual whatever. So... I can only imagine what was being said in the chat rooms. Maybe if you were someone that was watching this live and you kind of saw what was going on, you can let me know what was being said in the comments below. But a lot of people on TikTok don't approve of this. Um, a lot of people have a lot of, in my opinion, warranted frustration about this friendship and what we're seeing between the dynamic of these four people. So when... Uh, Eugenia asks, oh, do you guys have ticks out here in Wyoming? And Jeffrey comes back on screen and says, well, no, but I'm seeing some ticks in the chat. Mm. People are saying, I love how happy Eugenia is. Yeah, she's so sweet. Oh, thank yes. you, Rich. You guys are all so sweet. So Her, boot, her, her boots are custom, you guys. You can't buy them outright. Yeah. So I'm not really entirely sure what Rich's point in saying that just now was. People in the chat are saying, oh, look at how happy Eugenia looks. Um, I think that that is sort of the disconnect here. 
just because this social situation is making Eugenia excited and happy doesn't mean it's necessarily good for her. So again, what are we trying to do here? Are we prioritizing happiness over what needs to be done? It's, I, I don't know. Like, does everything go out the window in life as long as you're happy? Um, I certainly don't think so. But I guess for Rich's here, his opinion is that, well, as long as Eugenia's is happy, I mean, it doesn't really matter what, what's going on or what's being said or what's being done. She's look, look how happy she is. And listen, I have heard a lot of you. There have been a lot of you that have come to the comments of these videos and been very vulnerable and shared your story with your past struggles. And some of you have said in those moments of your darkest hours, you know, your lowest lows and everything, you wouldn't think it, but the happiness and the the way that it made you feel in that very moment it's exactly what your mind wanted so in a lot of regards in a, it might be difficult for someone who has never experienced that to put themselves in the shoes and understand but if the mind is gravitating and wanting something in particular and it's obtaining it, of course the mind is going to be happy. But is that, is that what is appropriate and necessary for the mind? Just because they're happy, it's frustrating. They're, they're custom Swarovski, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's just how it is. Hopefully yeah. this is getting recorded for the documentary. <laughs> yeah. the doc mm. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> that like the, the final oh, is, is your beauty room done, done Jeffrey? You still under construction? Wait. So Paul kind of makes a joke just now. Hopefully all of this is being recorded for the documentary about, you know, what what is to come. Um, A very morbid joke, in my opinion, but I think that that was more of a dig at sort of the reaction channels, you know, channels like me that do record the TikTok live streams and then talk about this later on. However, I, I mean, it comes across the way it comes across. Hopefully this is being recorded as the documentary of the three of you having this very strange relationship with Eugenia and the way that you guys will be viewed after fill in the blank. Which part? Your beauty room is con still it's under ready? construction. We're going to do a get ready tomorrow with I'm Paul so where we all do our makeup. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, we're going to be explicitly oh, streaming on CNN. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's gonna be amazing. Oh yeah, of course. We're going to be exclusively streaming on CNN. Oh boy, that is quite the statement. That is quite the statement. Now, if you all have not seen this, there have been a lot of articles published recently. There have been a lot of segments on TV talking about Eugenia. So for Jeffrey just now to say this will be streaming on CNN, he's very aware. He's very aware of the fact that this friendship, this buzz that is coming out of the dynamic between these four, he's very aware that people are covering it and a lot of eyes are on him. So it just leads you to think, is Jeffrey just an attention getter? Is he doing this on purpose because he wants to revive his stardom that hasn't been at its peak since he started to fight with uh, Taddy and James Charles? Like, wh what trying to do? What are you trying to do here? Is this all for financial gain? Are you trying to promote your new palette? But regardless of the fact, Paul just made a comment, and then Jeffrey made a comment about the fact that they are receiving a lot of attention and a lot of eyes are on them. So they're not stupid. They're not, these are not stupid people. They're very aware of what's going on. They're just deliberately choosing to continue with it. And really, that's what I'm trying to figure out. The why. Jeffrey is handsome looking. Yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey is handsome. Are they going to make... Are they gonna make a baby? You know what? It was so crazy because like 
people were like, where's Eugenia? Where's Eugenia Cooney's missing? Where she's at? And then boom, she's with Jeffree Star. Are you saying that again, Rich? Like, yeah, because no. cause you, didn't, you know, you didn't go live for like one or two days. And then people were like, where's Eugenia? Yeah, and then you're literally with, nobody knew you even made that travel. And then you're boo, like surprised. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's, I feel like whenever like I'm like not there for a day or two, then people are like, just outliving your actual life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens when you're a social media celebrity and you come on here and tell people, I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to visit Jeffrey. Because of safety reasons, I'm not going to tell you all when I'm going to visit. So for Eugenia, I don't know if her TikTok profile still says this, but when I looked at it recently, it says live daily. If you're advertising to millions of people that you go live daily and then you don't go live and you have been quoted as recently saying, I'm going somewhere, but I'm not going to tell you when. I mean, really, do you get to take a step back and make fun of all the people when they speculate about when you're going there? Because you're teasing the information and you know that you're popular and you know that you have a lot of eyes on you. So in my opinion, taking a step back and saying, oh, guys, she's just living her actual life. You all need to go touch gra grass. It's kind of a little bit gaslighty, a little bit gaslighty because you're kind of breadcrumbing the audience to want and hang on to more. So when they do, and they're giving you the response that you kind of set up for them, I, I don't know. Do you, do you get to make fun of them after the fact? She get like locked up. Her, like I just picture all these people in their dark bedrooms with a big bright computer screen, like doing all of this stuff. Cut to <laughs> Eugenia, literally just like in line at Bath and Body Works, checking out. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, funny. It was, yeah it was a fantastic surprise i can't believe that oh my gosh thank you i'm so happy to be here guys so i mean it's so much fun it's so much it fun. it is like i've already like been having such a good time so like and, and, and thank you jeffrey for like you know having me here and everything yeah. well it's just <laughs> awesome to get to see two amazing people who are so supportive with so many other people just get to be together in the same room. It's just like so much good energy. Thank and, you so much. And yeah, I hope it's one of the best trips. Thank you. Like, oh, again, no, I don't blame you. We're going to have a little talk show sit down. Yes. <clears throat> and Jeffrey does. He has such a good energy. Oh, I don't know. Is that the vibe that you all are getting from this panel right now? Good energy. A lot of supportive people coming together and the vibes are just radiating positivity. Is that, is that all what you are feeling right now? I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not feeling that at all. You're like, honestly, and mm -hmm. what did you guys do? So it's great to like, you know, have you guys here. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jeffrey, yes. We're getting our talk Thank show you. seats out. This is amazing. I love, I love it. Get our talk show seats. It's giving Ricky Lake. We are. Hi guys. Yes. Oh, this was so hot. Nice. Wait. Ricky Lake. Okay. Oh yeah, that's oh, great. Yeah. Yes. This iPad is so really weird. Really nice seats too. Oh, I hope I'm not like messing you, with you your broke the ice. No. <laughs> the yaks are all around the property, so you can see the yaks no matter where you're at. Yep. We're not, but we can't yeah. not break every stuff. Go, go, Ricky. Go, Ricky. Go, Ricky. Go, Ricky. <laughs> go, Ricky. Oh, my gosh. I know. I love this for them, too. Aw, such a gentleman. That's I know. So wow, it does in Connecticut, too. Lately, it's like. I know. It and then when the time changes, where it gets dark. Oh. When it does the fall, where it's the time changes and we lose. Oh, my gosh. I hate it. It's 5 p.m. here, you guys. It's dark. I swear Jeffrey's the only one that I can hear on this panel. I, he's whispering, Rich is whispering. She's like, it feels like a million miles away. Jeffrey's really the only one I can hear. I'm sorry about the audio on this. I have it turned up max volume, but this is just the way that it came across on my computer. I don't, I don't know if there is anything different that I can do, but he is really the only one that I feel like I can hear. Yeah. Right now, it's like halfway between. So it's, it's like, we still got sunlight. We can still see like the yaks. Yes. And, oh. so beautiful. And, and what time is it? 
Oh, it's 6.20. Yeah, it's dark here. Wait, who's on your time zone? Oh, yeah, because, Paul, you're in your Oh, it's 6.20 right? here, yeah. Rich, yeah. tomorrow Eugenia's going to go pick out what she actually wants for dinner. Oh, yeah? Tomorrow's day, Rich, you know? <laughs> yeah. Get yeah. ready. I said, you don't pick ones with a name, you pick one with a number. Yes, we pick the ones with a number. So don't <laughs> okay. So, I... Now, I definitely want to address this just because some of you have been tweeting me this the fact that jeffrey you know i mean you're talking to both paul and rich and i guess eugenia she's sitting next to you but the fact that he addressed rich when saying oh tomorrow we're going to be picking out the yak that eugenia is going to have for dinner um, a peculiar statement in and of itself. But the fact that he addressed Rich, and some of you were saying on X that uh, Rich missed this invite and that Rich has been uh, kissing Jeffrey's rear end for a long time now. And the fact that maybe Eugenia gets to have this expose and gets to go to the Star Ranch and spend time with Jeffrey and everything is this sort of um, teasing Rich in a way? Kind of, uh, you know, saying, well, Rich, I mean, but I mean, I have seen Jeffrey invite Rich in the past, you know, oh, you should come out and everything. But I suppose that there's a little, there's something maybe that goes on a little bit different behind the scenes. You know, a, there's a difference between talking to someone and saying, oh, yeah, we should get together sometime. And then actually, you know, establishing plans and working out flights and everything. So I don't know. Do you guys think that Jeffrey is kind of holding Rich at bay, kind of saying, oh, well, yeah, you should definitely come out sometime. That'd be so fun. <laughs> and then never follow up with it. But with Eugenia, it's like, okay, well, hey, let me pay for your flight. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't know. But Paul's went. Eugenia's went. There's only one. <laughs> oh, you I love that. Face. Yes. yes, it's giving yaks to Rogan off. <laughs> oh my god. Like, I think they're saying we need to pick a nice, like, juicy, like, a nice, hearty bowl. A nice, hearty one. Yep, a nice, plump one. Yeah. Yes, nice, plump. Oh yeah. <laughs> nice and plump. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice Rich, camera. tomorrow we're going to walk the camels and Eugenia's going to so meet them all. I can't wait. Uh, so yes. Fun. Again. Again. I mean, first time could have been a coincidence. Telling Rich specifically. Oh, hey, tomorrow, this is what we're going to do, Rich. I, why, I mean, why, why can't you say that to him, too? Why specifically? <laughs> I mean, Rich, tomorrow we're going to go pick out Cartier bracelets and I'm going to pay for them too. You should have been here. I, I, like, what are, you, what are you trying to do? Is Jeffrey going to... Yeah, you guys, we're going to help each other. Like, well, he's... I'm probably going to have no idea what I'm doing. So, you know, it's, yeah, that's right. like <laughs> very helpful. And like... <laughs> oh my God. Was that Where Rich is... the Galaxy? Oh. Yeah, I sent y'all a little Galaxy. Yeah. We love you. My gift band still. You know what? <laughs> oh. Oh. I, I swear, every time they do this, anytime there is, you know, some exciting reaction that they'll do, it's because someone sent in some, like, gigantic $500 donation or something. I mean, seriously, in two seconds flat, they're going to name some animal or they're going to be like, ripped pantyhose, thank you for the falcon. They're going to th they're gonna thank a user and then they're going to talk about some animal and then that animal actually equals a dollar amount that I don't know. But I guarantee that's about what's about to happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, Jeffrey? Okay. I got you. There's a whole choreographed dance to it, Rich. You're, yeah. you're going to have to learn it. And that's on top 23, y'all. Can we get Paul to kill me? Oh, my God, Rich. <laughs> and Jeffrey, let's go. Oh. Let's go. Oh, Rich my God. Stops if you, with the lion. If you guys aren't following my top three, the, the lion. The lion. Now, I know that the falcon... What was the other one? The eagle? 
there's, there's, I don't know, but we were talking about it yesterday. The Falcon is over a hundred dollars. I don't know how much the lion is. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> Other three people in this live, please drop them all a follow. Yes. Let's go, chat. Oh, the Halloween would be fun. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Are you oh pushing ranks today, Paul? Well, I, I guess so. <laughs> oh, it's a new. Okay, I'm not crazy. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Oh, yes. yes. I love that game. Let's go, Eugenia, with the boo What sure is this thing? What? Yeah. Is it, what is it called? You want to Boo's see it again, town? Rich? Get ready. Boo's Town. Get ready. Let's go. Oh, my God. I love it. And it's so much softer on my ears than the witch. Yeah. <laughs> witch like, you don't want wow. me to send you 30 witches right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> that you're I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. Witches. Yes. She's oh, back. Shit. They brought, they brought the her back. The witch is back. The witch is back. <laughs> the witch is back. Right, she's oh. back. It's suddenly more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn, that bitch, she turned up her rate. <laughs> Yes. And she, but she didn't even change outfits. That she so. got a few. She got with a few A-listers, and her rate went up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she raised the price. Crazy. I, I was like, wow. I, I thought it was different. I was like, same. Yeah, right. Uh, Rex, yeah. Rexings. Let's go with the love drop. <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> Let's go, Dominic Santana. Yeah, let's go. Paul's number 22. Oh, you guys, we've got to get Paul to top 20. Let's do it. Oh, that we, y'all, we can do that You're so getting easy. So That's Which means basically give Paul more money. Oh, he's, he's, he's number 22 in the world. We have to get him to top 20, you guys. Or star family, and then they'll do this, and then, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that translates to, you know, buy more dinosaurs or buy more falcons, buy more eagles, buy more uh, spooky pumpkins, and then send them to Paul. And then when he gets your emoji, that will go into his PayPal account, and then he'll, you know, and then he'll go up on rankings, and then we did it, you guys! Yay! Fun! I, this is just such a strange concept to me. <laughs> Yes. Wizard of Oz, Ruby Slipper vibes. Yes. Wow. Wait. Ooh, ooh. Wait. I can't see. I'm blinded. All that bling. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. Oh, uh, Taylor. Oh, my God. You guys, Paul has to be top 20 right now, right? We gotta get him there. I'm blinded by all that bling. It's just, I don't know. That, that was such a Gretchen Wieners thing to say. I mean, oh, I love your nails, Jeffrey. Oh, I'm blinded by the bling. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of nauseating. Permanent number 24. Let's, Let's go, y'all. What about the daily, Richie? I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Let's see. Come on, daily. Mm -mm. I know the nails are out. Yeah, I can't find it. Drinks. Oh, do I have to do everything? <laughs> <laughs> You guys, he's 55k away from 19. So close! Oh my god, that's insane. Oh yeah, number 19 shook too. Oh he, my gosh, he's not Paul, happy. you are- He's not happy. Number 19 is upset. <laughs> Uh-oh. You should battle him later, Paul. Drop it on his head. Is he cute? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Then sure. Sometimes it's like an hour, sometimes it's six hours. You just never know. Mm -hmm. It's very like- It's, it's almost so like a sand glass. I feel like it's like a- um. Or like a pie. So if you send your full limit in like a short amount of time, then it yeah. takes like a long time to get it back. Where if you really? give kind of throughout the day, it's like a Is he cute? Oh, no. And it's like a give and take. Like, oh we well, only have fifty percent. So this will be back in a few hours. And it's like So I guess if you go like really hard at once, then yeah, they then, ban you uh -huh. Wow. No. What pumpkin? Hit the face. It's giving. <laughs> the fake? I'm surprised you're not mentioning the hairline, honey. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I'm, there's so much to absorb that I'm the the lips. You think those are natural? They are, baby. Said uh, his his uh, mother's side. Good for him. Yeah. The hairline. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, and he's also like, you know, five four. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, see, I mean, I if you don't want to come across as a mean girl, these aren't the kind of conversations that you should be having in front of thousands of people. I, I mean, talking about somebody's height, their lips, their their hairline. I'm surprised you didn't mention the hairline. I'm not, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I don't know. When you hear this, and then in other scenes of them doing a panel, they'll talk about how supportive people are coming together, and it's such positive energy. It, it's just, it, do you guys really believe what you're saying? <laughs> oh. Sitting. <laughs> You'd make a pretty lady boy. <laughs> is this the guy Paul's gonna battle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, the hairline the hairline's not giving. Oh yeah, so there's some there is not everyone going to go tell him I'm shit talking his hairline. Y'all are evil. Leave him alone. Yeah, got it. That oh dude follows God. me. Y'all better be nice and go send him a fucking rose or something. Yeah. yeah. Be nice oh, that part. Mm -hmm. Oh don't don't go tell him I said that. When when have we seen that before with him? Yeah, don't be going and telling him that I said that. Y'all are delusional. I... <laughs> oh, my friend Andrew from last night's on. Paul, we should. Oh, yes. Hey, he's a nice kid. I'm sure. I'm sure he's a great kid, a great guy. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure he's really swell. Yeah, he's swell. <laughs> swell, swell guy. Very swell. Wow. Swell. Yes. He was so new. Who? Who so whose hairline's receding? Not mine, bitch. Yeah. No. no. Mine's yeah. literally Not stayed mine. the same. I'm a no. thousand years old. It's called <laughs> it's called plastic surgery, honey. <laughs> I'm a thousand. I was about to say. I, I mean, when when you have over a hundred million dollars, you can kind of pay anyone to do anything to you. I, I mean. He, Jeffrey needs more hair on his head. Jeffrey's got more hair on his head. Jeffrey wants a more chiseled jaw. Jeffrey will get that more chiseled jaw. I, I mean, anything. It, it's it, you know you ever, you heard that you, you ever see those old pictures of Kylie Jenner? It's like then versus now. It's like you're not ugly. You're just poor. <laughs> Thousand years old. Girl in air. Let's go with the train, Kathy. It's with the called crown. transplant, honey. <laughs> wow, and like. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. He's so cute. It's like, oh, He's so sweet. Oh. Yeah, I want to get like that. He's the sweetest. Filled oh, in. God. They could do that, right? Yeah. If you did, if you did, you don't, do you want any of the front done or no? Sure. Let's make my forehead like this big. <laughs> okay. So yeah. that's about like twenty grand. Yeah. Okay. It's not bad. It's yeah. the, the healing's really brutal. Guys, s send in the witches to fix Paul's hairline. G guys, oh, we need we need to get Paul into the top 10 of hairlines on TikTok. Please send in more witches and galaxies, please. We we need $20,000. Heart hands together, star family. <laughs> I just when did our uh, when did our society become kids getting their mom's credit cards to buy emojis to send to people to get hair transplants? I I I, I just it, yeah. I filmed it on my channel if anyone wants to go be be shocked. It's brutal to heal, but once it starts growing, it's like so cool. And I it, think I saw that it, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Ago. And it takes months for it to obviously get the same length. Mm -hmm. like your fucking beautiful hair. That's why is I was that, like, eh. is that on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, it's called okay. uh, literally Jeffree Star Hair Transplant. Yeah. And I show everything. I go to the best doctor in America, and I wanted my hairline more feminine, so I asked for a more yeah girlish uh, approach. Mm hmm. So, I mean, if you had the means to be able to fix your hairline and you're talking about it so openly right now, but just a few minutes ago, you were making fun of someone's hairline. I, I, 
how, how does that make you come across as anything other but a dick? And it was I didn't... Really amazing. And you're, you're essentially giving yourself an organ transplant because you're taking it from your own body and you're putting Thank it you best. Oh, wow. An organ transplant? Whoa. Yeah, because you're taking, yeah, that's literally what, what he told me. I was like, that's nuts. <clears throat> that's amazing. And it really works. Mm -hmm. Like, honestly, it's it really does. It works. And then once it's grown out, you can obviously bleach it and everything's normal again. And it's like, yeah, you can't tell. And when I shave my head, you can't see the scar anymore. It's invisible. Oh, that's what's up. That's what I would be worried about is like any yeah. type of like, yeah. Yeah. They take the hair from the back of your head and these little strips, right? And then they, well, they take took out a each. Big, they took a big strip and then they closed it and you literally, it's like, it's, it's crazy. Oh. Lenny Lin Lin. That's like I've been hanging out with Jeffrey here. There is nothing like that going on. So, <laughs> some of the people like oh, oh yeah. Lin. <laughs> the name oh, Lenny Lin Lin. That's so cute. Rich, I'm still not over Eric's phone case. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you don't know what that was about. You know the video that we watched earlier when Jeffrey left the screen for a second and then came back and talked about allergies? He came on here basically refuting the claim on that and everything because he showed a phone case of a a sticker that had uh, some, some like bag of drugs on it. And he said, look, everybody, it's a sticker. It wasn't real. I can't believe that you guys would say that. You know, F off. Uh, so that's what he's talking about here if you haven't seen that clip. They me really, tried, they really tried me, didn't they? Yeah, they did. I'm like, you guys. If I did that, I would just say it. I, I don't like. There's nothing yeah. to be saying about. Hey, you guys, I'm into that. Like, I've been hanging out with Jeffrey here. There is I don't know if that's true. If, if you had a, if you had a problem with substances, I would just come out and say it. I don't know if everyone that has those kind of problems is so open about it. Because, I mean, I, I get the line of thinking. It's like, well, what do I have to hide? I, I, I could, You know, if, I, if it was, I would just say it. I don't. But with that, I mean, people typically have a reasoning to try to keep that a little bit behind closed doors. So I don't really understand when Jeffrey's saying, well, if I was doing it, I would just say it. Well, first of all, it's illegal. So I don't know if it would be the smartest thing for you to do to come on here to admit that you were doing that. So There's nothing like that going on. So, <laughs> some of the people, like, well, she has masked. <laughs> really? I was going to say really, because that's all we did when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's all we did when we were there. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, my God. God. I can't. Like, with all the late nights, we needed right energy somehow. Yes, Paul, with this scheme. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just riding oh, them you slow. Thank you, Tony. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys for the gift. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the Professional skier. Right. Professional, you know. Yeah. No. Like That's also, I like going skiing. That's another term. You know what oh, that means, that, right? Does that mean like skiing? Oh, really? You have the two ski oh, poles. Now Eugenia knows what skiing with two guys oh means. Gosh, thank you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Rumble in the jungle, let's go. Oh my god, I can't, I can't. Professional skier. That's Paulina. Yes, yeah, Paulina. <laughs> Come on, Paulina. Thank you, <laughs> Talia. Thank you, Talia. Mm. Oh, I love it. We love Eiffel Towering. We love skiing. We love all of them. I, I never knew what any of that was. I feel like I, I've learned yeah. so much. Like, I love it. Yay. <laughs> Glasses in session, Eugenia's too. <laughs> Drizzy, stop. Yeah, Drizzy they said she's super for this. Oh, Aww. Drizzy. Drizzy loves Eugenia. He's begging I for her attention. I love him Aww. so much. Drizzy, come here. Drizzy. Drizzy, come here. Let me pick you up. Drizzy. Where's my son? Tracy is like, oh my gosh, she's the sweetest. All right, y'all. Well, I think that's all we're going to do for today. There is, oh, there's a lot more footage, a lot more footage to get through. So 
we will do that. We will do that in the coming days and everything. But I mean, just seriously, when they go live like this for five hours to be able to condense this down and, you know, make it into something that's worth watching within an hour time frame like this. Um, I, I can't I can't work with like six hours of footage like this. So we will get to it. We will definitely get to it. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this and what you think may be coming in the near future. Thanks for watching.